Ah, good people. Uh, you are travel mate, yeah? I'm at uh, Sikwening. Sikwening is in Piring, which is just uh, not far from the Echo Caves. It's a beautiful place, but uh, it also has a very nice sacred site that is at the Tufa Rock. Uh, this is one of the 20 Tufa Rocks that are still active in the world. And in Limpopo, I heard, uh, I heard that uh, there are about three of them that are still active, but this one that we are in here is uh, the largest. Um, guys, I've got a secret, secret, a secret for you. I've got a guide who is very good at it, who is able to narrate everything about the place. His name is Lucius. He's with me here. <laughs> hi, Lucius. Hi, 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 man. How are you, man? I'm doing good in you. Ah, that's great, man. That's marvelous. Do you want to tell them just a little bit about uh, what the Tufa Rock is all about? Actually, the Tufa Rock is all about, like, we only find the Tufa Rock at the Dolomite area, meaning that the water, natural spring water, runs through inside the caves underground whereby it passes through the, uh, the dolomite rock or the elephant skin rock, which is, consists of the calcium and magnesium. As water runs through it, it dissolves. Then coming out due to the sunlight and the photosynthesis, all the air, then the calcium and magnesium carbonates start solidifying, forming the so-called the limestone. So how it grows is that with the tufa rock, you also find the aquatic moss, which requires shade to become more green but now because we are just after winter it's no more longer that green because it's now exposed to the direct sunlight so as the moss grows on top of that limestone then after water keeps on flowing the, with the calcium and magnesium carbonates then they continue solidifying on top of the moss then the moss pushes through the uh, soft limestone then forming another layer so the process is more like limestone moss limestone moss limestone moss so that's how the tufa rock grows oh thank you thank you very much and here where we are we are just in a small portion where we are gonna go inside the cave inside the tufa rock uh, it's a small one the big one is somewhere down underneath we have to go down the stairs and uh, show you more but uh, for now uh we go in yeah we are going yeah, in let's go in Ah, uh, this is the second chamber. Yeah, now we are in the second chamber. Ah, uh, yes. Oh, yes. We are here. We are here. Linda Kendira's house is still there. We'll take you them touch everything, out. Lucius. Yeah. Are you not uh, scared of what is No, I made a research. Because with... it's a ritual place, the way I'm seeing it. So I once guided some of the people who are more into these traditional things. Then I once asked them if we want it be a problem if we take out the candles. Then they even said to me, it's just that the others, they just decided to leave the candles behind. But actually, even if after performing their rituals, they can, if they take uh, the candles away, there's nothing wrong with it. Okay. So this water is not flowing anymore. Actually, it comes from underground. Yeah, from underground. And just here. It never went. No, out. no. Oh, yes. And yes. One is always here. Because I remember the other time we came, the water was flowing down. Maybe it's because it was it's summer. Summer and after those heavy rains. Yes, 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 yes. So even inside the caves, this is how it looks. If you see up there. Oh. This is how it looks inside it means the caves. that at some stage, th this is a true far rock, by the way. Yes. So basically, and this is still alive. Yes, still alive. Wow. So the tufa rock and those stalactites and stalagmites inside the caves, the growth or how it grows, the formation is just the same thing. It's just that the difference is that the other one is underground. That's why inside the caves you can't find those moths and all that because the photosynthesis is not taking place. Oh yes. Some of the developed ca uh, caves you find the algae because of those lights. Ah. But the moss, you'll never find it inside the caves. 
Oh, wow. We are inside the cave. We are inside a true farog. Wow. We are here. We are here. We are making these pores. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, many wow. people come. So that is basically the source yes. of this water. Yeah. It's from underground. Underground. Wow, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. All the rubbish that the people live behind. I can leave it. So how it grows or the formation of the tufa rock? You know, when we studied the geology, we studied about different types of rock. So we've got the, the igneous rock or yeah. under the igneous rock, that's where you find the dolomite mm. or the elephant skin rock, mm. which is this rock. Okay. Even when you look at it, it looks more like the elephant skin. Mm. That's why they say the elephant skin rock. Mm. So this kind of a rock consists of the calcium and magnesium mm. underground there. And whenever they say the area is a dolomite area, meaning there are a lot of caves. Mm. So the water flows underground there yeah. through those rocks. Then the calcium and magnesium start dissolving from that rock. From that mm. rock then when it gets out, the air, the photosynthesis and all that causes the water to solidify. And as it solidifies, it forms that in the water. So here it happens naturally. Okay. That light brown mud like is called the limestone, which okay. is formed by the calcium and magnesium carbonate when it solidifies because it dissolves from that rock. Then when it gets out the air, the photosynthesis and all that forces the water to solidify. And as it solidifies, it forms that limestone or the light brown mud over there. Mm. Then as it grows like that, then you find this green metal, like which is our aquatic moss. Okay. You know, we've got different types of moss. The other ones, yeah. you can find it where there's always uh, moist. Mm. But this one requires water and shade. That's why you see it now is not that, that green. Mm -hmm. Because now it just came out of winter. All many leaves just dropped. So it's exposed to the direct sunlight. Okay. Then from now on, the kids will be developing the leaves. Then it will create a shade for the moss, then it will become more greener than before. Mm. So the moss forms the layer on top of the limestone or the light brown mud. Mm. Then the water keeps flowing, solidifying, forming another layer of the limestone on top of the moss. Yeah. And remember, by that time, it's still soft, mm. it's not more like a rock. Mm. Then the moss pushes through the limestone in order to get the photosynthesis okay. then it forms another layer again remember it was oh, the yes. moss now the limestone mm. then now the moss pushes through mm. to form another layer then yeah. the calcium and magnesium uh, magnesium carbonate start solidifying on top of that moss mm. meaning that's how it grows but okay. the process takes quite a long period of time so then this is a dried uh, a tufa tufa rock as you can see on that rock you see many 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 holes yeah. That's whereby the moss was busy pushing out, forming another layer, pushing out, forming. So, but what layer. what happened? There's no more water here. No more water getting there. But if this one grows, hopefully, you wouldn't be there. Even myself, there will only be the history that there was uh, the guy named by Lucius guiding here <laughs> when he gets attached <laughs> to that one. It will be just the history. <laughs> so, if this one grows, going there, then most definitely 
this one will come back to life. Okay. Because the water with the calcium and magnesium yeah. will be thro flowing through that rock. Wow. Yeah.